Shalom. Today we're going to cover another unit on understanding Hebrew verb structure. Remember the verb conjugation will show us the tense, the person, and the binyan. We have started in the perfect or the past tense, which in Hebrew will cover these meanings. I did, I was doing, I had been doing anything which is in the past. Remember the seven binyanim. I hope you are sufficiently familiar with these by now. Today we're going to cover the PL. Remember that the past tense has 10 different persons. The singular, I, masculine you, feminine you, he and she, a plural we, plural you, masculine, you, feminine, and then two forms for they. We've already learned about these suffixes. The same suffixes will be used in every binyam. So they apply to the pa'a, which we've already covered, and today to the pia. A common pia verb which you know is the bear to speak. And here is the full conjugation. So we see all the endings are the same. If we look at the third person masculine, he, we see that the form, the vowels, are the same as the vowels in the name of the binyan. P, A, L, D, bear. The basic difference between the P, L, and the Pa, A is that first vowel. So in the Pa, A, we had Shamarti, and this is Dibarti. So it's a very slight vowel difference. Uh, in fact, if you wouldn't have vowels, if you were an unpointed text, you couldn't tell the difference. In the first person example from Genesis 24, 33, we see that the servant has uh, come. He's found a bride for Isaac, and now he is at her house, at Laban's house. And he says, uh, they put the food before him. He says, I'm not going to eat anything. Im dibarti dvarai, until I have spoken the words I have to say. And he said, Daber, speak. That's a command form. In the second person masculine singular in Genesis 18 5, Abraham is speaking to the men. He says, uh, Here, take some bread and so on before you uh, carry on. And the men uh, say, Ken ta'ase ka'asher dibarta. Yes, you should do, you will do what you have said. In the third person masculine singular, he said, there's a so slight spelling anomaly, which is actually quite consistent throughout Tanakh. Instead of having the tsere under the bet, you have the segel, but the understanding is the same here in Genesis 12. For Yelech Avram Ka'asher Diber Allah Yehovah. And Abraham went as was spoke as he spoke to him, and who spoke to him, Yehovah spoke to him. In Genesis thirty nine, nineteen, we have the feminine form she said, Vayehi Kishmoa Adonav et Divrei Ishto Asher Dibra Allah. And so when the man heard the words of his wife, which she spoke to him. In 1 Samuel 20, 23, here we see the plural form, we said, V'hadavar asher dibarnu ani va'ata, and the thing about which we spoke, that is you and I. In Exodus 12, 32, the, the form for all y'all, right? Dibar 10. Exodus 12, 32, at the point of departure of the Exodus, Pharaoh says, Khu ka'asher dibarta. It's a command form. You take as you have said. In Genesis 45, 15, as Joseph makes up with his brothers, we see that he is kissing them, and they're crying. V'yacharechen dibru echav ito. His brothers spoke with him. So we see all the endings are the same, just very slight vowel change on accounting for the PL.
Again, we have these same five forms. Of course, the drop letter imperfect is not affected because this is the perfect. Uh, we will have one hollow example, uh, one lamed he example, and one lamed chet. So for lamed chet, we have the root uh, shin lamed chet shalach. The difference in the meaning between the pa'al shalach and the pi'al shilach is really minor. Perhaps shilach is a little more forceful, um, and can, even including up to divorce, but they both have the idea of sending out. Again, the forms are a bit unusual. We don't have that many choices to look at, but in fact, as it is in the pa'al, there's no changes for verbs that end in chet. Um, those changes are only affected in the present tense. So we see a normal form in Isaiah 43:14, shilachti bavela. Uh, I sent them to Babylon. A first person form. In Genesis 28:6, we see what we would expect to see a normal form for third person. Um, Esau is bemoaning the fact that Yitzchak is uh, blessed. Yaakov vishilach oto hadena aram vakachat lo misham isha. He sent him, that is, Yitzchak sent Yaakov to Padan Aram to find a bride, a wife. For verbs that end in he, we have the same formation in the past tense as we had in the Pa'al, that we lose the he and we get an extra yud, a hiric with a yud, under the second letter of the root. This root, kav he, means to cover. So we see in the first person we don't have kisati, we have kisiti. Job 31:33. Im kisite ka adam pesha'i. If I cover as a man my transgressions. The second person kisita. Deuteronomy 23.3. From the rule about having a special digging tool when you go uh, to go potty outside the camp that you have something to cover up what comes out of you. Again, lose the hay, we get the extra yud in this form. The form for he looks normal. Kisa, we had shilach, so forth. Numbers 9.15. In the day that they raised up the tabernacle, kisa he'anan et hamishkan, the cloud covered the tabernacle. Also for the third person feminine, as we had before in the pa'al, we get, we lose the hay still, but we get an extra tav. So here in Genesis thirty-eight fifteen, we see the form kista, talking about the story of Tamar, that she covered her face as Judah was coming by. The first person plural, we, looks normal. We've lost the hey, we have the yud. Kisinu, from Genesis 37, 26. Judah is trying to reason with his brothers. Why should they murder Joseph and cover his blood? So they managed to sell him into slavery. Again, the third person plural, kisu, we lose the hay, there's no extra yud. It just takes that third person plural ending that shurik u. Speaking about Aaron and his sons, when they're moving the camp and they're taking down the curtain that divides the holy place from the holy of holies, and they use it to cover the, the Ark of the Testimony. The chisuba with her, with the parochet, with the curtain, they cover uh, the Aron Ha'edu to the Ark of the Testimony. Now we did a special presentation on the participles for what is considered to be, by some people, the PL form of hollow verbs. Some of the older grammars, they just change the name, they make a new binyan, Polal or pulal or pilal, and so what happens is we do lose the middle letter, but this but the last letter is doubled. So there are a few examples of this, and we see this form 
Shavavti et Yisrael el Navehu. From Jeremiah 15:19. So uh, it's a little bit stronger than God returning the people, but he's restoring and somehow refreshing the people, Israel, to their pasture. Again, not a lot of forms to choose from. So here the verb, which is shoveva, is attached to a personal pronoun ending tech, meaning you, talking about the people. Again, it's not the idea of really returning or even refreshing. Here it's to, to mislead them, to take them in a wrong direction. So the people are trusting in their chokhmah, which is feminine, and their da'at, which is feminine. And of these, the author says, he, shovevatech, she, one of those things, will mislead you. So we don't have a whole lot of new information here. I know that it seems when you first start with these verbs, it's quite overwhelming. But remember that all these past tense endings, all these perfect endings are true for every binyan. And so we'll continue to tackle the binyanim one by one in each form so that we can learn them. Until next time. Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.